because you start off alone and you have to develop the skills to entertain when no one's there. You then get to the point where you have anywhere from five to kind of 50 viewers, I'd say, where you have a community, you have chat, you can talk, you've got that thing. You're then part of something bigger than you. You're not relying on yourself. And then when you kind of get higher than that, the chat is so mad, you go alone again. So all the skills that you built of keeping entertainment when no one's there, it's the same skills you need to keeping people when everyone's there and you can't talk to chat. If you've skipped over that first phase where you had to learn how to be good to get that initial couple of viewers, you don't know what you're gonna do. You don't know how to do it because you just had chat. So actually streaming to zero viewers is very, very important. Welcome to the latest episode of the Streamers of Consciousness podcast. My name is Charm and today is a very special one because we've got Cadet Grumpy Duck, the absolute titan over there on TikTok who's seen phenomenal growth over the past couple of years and whose live streams continue to sustain absolutely brilliant numbers and some of the tips and tricks he gives in this episode are absolutely priceless. So do watch this and make sure you go and check out Cadet Grumpy Duck over on TikTok. I'll link his profile in the description here. Enjoy the episode and let me know what you think in the comments. Well, listen, thank you. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, uh, we've been connected for a little little while. Uh, I think one of your one of your guys jumped into my stream when I was early on and they were like, go and check out Cadet Grumpy Duck. He's, you know, he's he's smashing this, blah, 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 blah. And you offered me some advice very early on. Uh, so this has been a long time coming. I appreciate it. Um, before we get into your kind of content streaming success, the titan that you are, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Where I usually start is very early gaming experiences. So let's let's go back to um, Grumpy Duckling, if you will. What were you doing? <laughs> what were you doing in the early days? What kind of games were you playing? How did you get into gaming first of all? So get into gaming. I've actually got a sleeve tattoo that represents all of my early days of, ta nice. uh, of gaming. Um, and essentially, uh, there's three games, three main games. So one of them, this is the earliest memory I have of gaming. Now, yeah. my parents might say I played other games and whatnot, but my earliest memory is Sonic 2, when you right. had Sonic and Tails. Yeah. And I have an older brother, and I remember sitting there, and he would play Sonic, and I will play as Tails. Yeah. And I freaking loved it. Tails would fly off in the distance. Half the time, I didn't even know where I was. <laughs> Playing that game, honestly, I remember that was a really nice bonding thing as well for me and my brother. Because, yeah. like, as you know, I don't know if you have brothers, but, like, you never get on with anything. I got four and that sisters, was... mate. Four sisters. Oh, okay. So I've got mm. one brother and we hated <laughs> each other. But that game was just the moment because he would just be playing and I would just be there helping. And like, there's certain parts where you need Tails to come and fly up to a bit. Yeah, and as yeah. soon as I do that, my brother's like, oh, thank you so much. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm contributing. <laughs> so that was the first like memory I have of gaming. Yeah. And then the other two games, one of them was I got a Nintendo 64 Mario Kart. Nice. Standby is the only game I'm good at. Play Yoshi every time. Absolutely adore Mario Kart. It's my favorite yes. game. I love it. And then the other one that got me into gaming was Pokemon. Right. I got a little Game Boy. I don't know if you've had a Game Boy, but like you couldn't light it up, so you'd be like a car trying to shine it and get the yeah. light as it comes through. Yeah. I'd be Game Boy. I got Game Boy Blue, Charmander, favorite character. Those three games all got me into gaming. I played all of those so much, especially more so Mario Kart than the other two. Yeah. But those three games were like my childhood. And have you played? Have you played the the latest Mario Kart, the last one that came out on Switch? Yeah. So me and me and my partner have it. We both have our own Switches. Yeah. And we'll get like friends come round, and what quite happens to happening is you have like six people, yes. and I'll play a few. I'll just absolutely smash it, and they're like, "Can you go and make the the bacon sandwiches? Can you go and make the drinks so that we can play and have some competition?" <laughs> I think Mario Kart is one of those games where, same with the, the Mario Tennis stuff, it's one of those where it's like very easy to play, very hard to master. Like you can yeah. just jump on and have a go, but when you play someone who's very good, like it sounds like you are, it's like, well, this isn't so fun for me anymore. <laughs> but I, I love Mario Kart so much. It's such a great game. Yes, but yeah. it's also, it also makes me rage when it's like you're going off in the distance and then your blue shower is like, would you go away? <laughs> So you, so you, you run the Nintendo 64, and did you con continue along with consoles? Because I, I think you play on PC now, right? Yeah, I was everything. So I had PlayStation 2, Xbox, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PCs. Uh, I quite an early age, because I grew up quite a poor family. Yeah. And early age, I realized, like, if I was to make money, I had to make it myself. Yeah. So, like, I got, like, a couple of paper rounds. I was doing, like, bits for, like, locals to, like, cut, cutting grass, stuff like that, to mm -hmm. earn money so yeah. that I could 
buy my own stuff like right. it made very apparent that like if i was going to have this stuff i needed to buy it yeah, yeah. and even things like pcs like i bought just off of like it was a gum tree at the time yeah just like an old school pc box and then my uncle was really into pcs yet he worked at a pc shop yeah. so he would give me like discounted parts and I'll, like built my own pc which is crazy because now i know nothing when it comes to pcs <laughs> but as a kid i remember literally this is like 15 16 at the time like building my own pc yeah. so that i had that and yeah i'd be like i'd literally go around the mate's house play halo come back play i used to play a, uh, american army aa yeah on the pc so i'll come back play that on the pc and then i'll play like fifa with my brother on the playstation and it's just like i, I could ju- i could jump on anything to be honest so you're not you're not one of these guys that's heavily involved in the console wars you don't have a don't have a strong opinion either way you enjoy enjoy both. my opinion is and it's really kind of a mute opinion now there's compatibility mode was always whatever your mates are on is the one you should get yes i mean that's that the reason it. like you probably know this about me i'm i only really started gaming again when the ps5 came out basically i had a switch and stuff before that and i'd like casual on fortnite and stuff like that on the switch um but all of my friends were playing warzone a game that I, it really frustrates me now, but they were all on it, <laughs> so I had severe FOMO. So I was like, I need a PlayStation 5, essentially, so I could spend time with friends over lockdown. I think there's probably a lot of people's story in terms of getting back into gaming again is, is being trapped yeah. in a house, right? <laughs> you need yeah. something to do. So when did you... So you, you got a PC quite early and started playing that, and so you've always been across all of these consoles. So when did... When did the... Con, when did the... When did you think there might be an option to actually do this stuff and get paid for it or at least do it and get followers and, you know, start creating content? When was that a thing for you? So for me, I'm very much the sort of person that, like, I get an idea and I just jump into it. And yeah. All of my, like, soul will go into it. And yeah. it was 2019. I finished my master's in architecture. I started my own business in architecture. Nice. And I was just every hour of every day i was just working and i was like i'm not doing anything else mm. and i found on facebook it's a group called the hummies vr they're a vr comedy group yes and i watched their videos and i never used to watch gaming videos i'd game all the time never mm. watched any youtubers never watched any streamers didn't like any of that i thought it yeah. boring i was like why would i want to sit there and watch someone play it when i just play it myself yeah i watched them and because they were in vr you had the hand actions you had the emotions behind it and i was like this is amazing yeah. So I watched them first. They literally were like a random Facebook video. And then I saw uh, Josh Darb and Mully and those sort of videos. And mm-hmm. I was like, I want to do that. So I bought the VR headset. Not intention to do content. I just bought the VR headset. And then I played it like twice. And it just went on the mantle for like three months. Mm. Just because I was like, I'm not doing anything with it. And I remember I sat there and I was watching their videos because I was used to get the bus a lot for work. Yeah. And I was on the bus and I was watching their videos. So I was like... I could do this. I was like, I just need to give myself a reason to use the VR headset. Like, yeah. and that's why I started. I posted literally, it was like a couple of days later, I uh, recorded a video. It was the most cringy, awful video I've ever done. And I just did a video and I posted it and I was like, oh, this is fun. I like this. Yeah. You get like a like and you're like, oh, I've got a <laughs> like. You get a comment and you're like, oh, someone's caught on my video. That's amazing. And like I did that and I was just like, ah, oh, this is cool. No intention to go full time and my money or anything. The whole reason I was doing it was to I basically went every week on a Sunday, I'm going to post a video. Yeah. So that means as it gets closer, it was a bit like a deadline for uni work or whatever. It was yeah, like, yeah. oh, we're seeing closer. Oh, I've got to do this. So I've got to jump in VR. I've got to play the game. Yes. Yeah. And then it was like, that's how I started. Basically, I had no intention of anything other than it. I need to use this VR headset I've just bought because it's not cheap. And otherwise, it's just sat on the side. Yeah. Yeah. That's the risk with these things, isn't it? We, we, we're very similar. I actually got a VR headset for my fiance. And it was a bit of a like, I'm going to buy this for you and then I'll get to use it as well. <laughs> One of those gifts. But yeah, that often sits there um, and you, you do need to find reasons to use it. Is that, well, I think with VR, it's that extra tiny barrier of having to get it out and put it on and just if you're makes recording, it that... mate, It's not a tiny barrier. Oh my yeah. days. <laughs> recording every recording, you'd have issues. Every live stream, you'd have issues. It is the biggest pain i love vr yeah is what i started i did it for like two odd years two three years yeah but, oh, it's painful man <laughs> yeah i did i i, I did it uh, I did, i've done one youtube recording of vr and i did it in the most basic way i literally recorded the stuff in the headset and then i just had my phone on a tripod on the other end of the room recording <laughs> and i was just like let me smash these two together in the editing software so you, so you did 
like the, uh, obviously before my kind of time coming onto TikTok, before my time knowing you, but you started out as a as, as a VR creator. Yep. So it's comedy skits. Yeah. Uh, all improv. Uh, I literally got a group together. I kind of like managed the group to such sort out recordings. Mm -hmm. um, we would go in. I got to the point where I had like full body tracking, so like wow. it was really engaging. Yeah, it was great. Um, did VR for a, a long period, um, and it was going really well. Like I was really embedded with the VR community. I do still. I'm still very close with a lot of the guys. Mm -hmm. Great community. Great set of games. Um, and I did that for a good like couple of years, and then I ended up doing like a big, actually a massive transition into Fortnite. <laughs> so what what was the thing that made you consider moving away from VR as like the, the fundamental focus? So I was basically just ciphering through TikTok. Yeah. And at the time, you couldn't go live screen live from your desktop. Right, yeah, yeah. So I was library TikTok and I saw somebody live on the desktop and I went, How the hell do you do this? So I pinged it over to my mate, mm -hmm. and how do we do this? And then we got like a group chat, there's three of us. Um and straight away we'll like the other two were like, Wait, what the hell? How do we do this? Yeah. So we found it, TikTok Live Studio. Um it was really funny actually. So the mate who like helped me set it up was called Limited Chills. Mm -hmm. And then the other friend is Your Power Games. And literally we found it, we all downloaded it. I'm sat there like, oh, before I go live, I want to get like everything set up nicely. Camera yeah. set up, game set up, all that stuff. I'm starting to do that. I've got a message from Pow just going, I'm live. Nothing <laughs> set up. What do I do? And I'm like, what? You've just gone live? And literally, we've literally like, we've gone live. And it was like this weird thing of like for a couple of weeks. Yeah. We just tried everything. We tried VR games, flat screen games, yeah. Gartic Mobile, wherever we could. We were sat on like two viewers. We were yeah. like, what the hell is going on here? Like we're getting no traction whatsoever. Mm. And then me and Limited um, tried Fortnite and it went up to like eight, nine, ten viewers. And yeah, we were yeah. like, ooh, progress. And then I saw like a live of somebody else playing with viewers. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let's bring in the viewers. And then you bring in the viewers and the views go and continue yeah. to grow. And you're like, oh, I've gone from streaming on Twitch to two free viewers. Mm -hmm. YouTube videos are doing well. They're a whole separate entity, but they were VR and whatnot. But like yeah. TikTok videos as well, separate. Like I always compare like lives to lives, videos to videos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the lives I was doing like two free uh, uh, viewers and then suddenly you go on TikTok and you're like oh I've got 20 people here I've got <laughs> yeah. five people and the buzz and all of that stuff you're like I've got people engaging I've got chat going on it quite quickly got to the point that us three couldn't even go live together because we were just muted the whole time because we were just talking to chat and we were like we've been doing live streams on Twitch for like a year mm. and we've never had this problem and yeah. then suddenly it's like oh my god I can't play with my friends anymore because I've got chat <laughs> I think this is the interesting thing about TikTok is that it's the one streaming platform, despite I think gaming still being quite young as a as a, as mm. a, a stream methodology on TikTok, it's still the only platform that has like real discoverability. Like anyone can go live yeah. tomorrow doing whatever it seems, you know, it could be the, the craziest stuff, not even gaming. But, you know, if you're new to gaming or you're, you're starting to stream, you can go live on TikTok and you could you could be on 20, 30, 40, 50 viewers. There's you, no platform you, like it. Yeah, it's, it's There's crazy. There's no platform for... like it for discoverability. Like nothing, nothing even holds a candle. I kind of hope because YouTube Shorts just came out for yes. like live streaming on YouTube Shorts. I kind of hope that was going to be the same and it's really like not the same. Yeah, I've given it, I've given it a go and it's this, this, I think YouTube, YouTube has its own discoverability stuff as well. And I'm not, you know, it's, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see how that goes. But yeah, TikTok is, I think discoverability across the whole platform is is better than almost everything else right now. What yeah, that so will be I, like I'm in a, two years, I don't know, but I'm a massive nerd when it comes to like researching stuff, mm. learning algorithms, all that stuff. And TikTok was the first platform ever where you could be just made an account, post a banger of a video, and it bangs. Yeah. Instagram, you kind of got views to your size and you yeah. grow naturally. YouTube, you got views to your size, you grow naturally. Everything was like that. Mm -hmm. TikTok came and went, nah, screw that. If this video does well, we're just going to put it to everybody. Yes. And after that, YouTube and Instagram and all of those other platforms have now got the same methodology. You'll notice that someone posts a YouTube short and it will just bang mm -hmm. because it's a good video. Um, and that's because of TikTok. TikTok yeah. forced them to change their minds because everybody who was anybody who was a creator went, 
why am I slaving away over on YouTube? Because I've got 10,000 subs and I'm consistently getting 5,000 videos, views, and now I'm just building up to 5,000 right now. But when I could just go to TikTok, I'm doing this video, yeah. and it hits like 20K, hits half a mil, hits yeah. a mil. But then you also have the other side of TikTok that if you don't post a banger, you can hit 200 views. Yeah. And you can have the size don't matter. Yeah, like yeah. your video quality matters, not your size. Yeah, it's the interesting thing, isn't it, really? It's, it's the, the, there's the whole thing of, you know, learning the methodology of what a good video is. We'll get, we'll get onto that in a little minute. But, um, you know, you could be, and I've seen accounts, I, I, I'm, I'm bound for often comparing myself to other people and feeling like I should be further <laughs> ahead than I am. I'm sure everyone has that. Um, but there is, sometimes you'll view an account that's got 20, 30, 40,000 followers. I'm, you know, I'm at um, 12,000 ish, so I'm looking at the, the 20, 30, 40,000 followers. And sometimes I look and I go, oh, they're getting similar views to me, so I don't need to feel too bad. You know, that if there, there's a lot of people with two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 views with that following size, but then there's people, like yeah. you say, who are, you know, I look at who are on 5,000 followers, half the amount that I am, and they're, you know, they're getting 30, 40, 50,000 views on their videos consistently. So there's definitely, there's definitely a craft to it, which I think uh, a lot of people don't mm -hmm. consider. Or well, one of the things account. when you're doing that comparison, like, I always say, and this is, when I say I always say it as well, like stuff like this isn't something that I've just overnight and I've mm. developed. This is four years of scrutiny, talking to some of the biggest creators, some of the most successful creators in the field, mm -hmm. and they've given me this advice. And then I listen to podcasts constantly about content creation. So this kind of advice that I say isn't something that I've just always known. It's something that I've done through, through meticulous heartache and headache. Yeah. But if you're looking at other accounts and you go, I've got 10K followers. He's got 10K followers. I've gone live. I've got 20 views. He's gone live and he's got 200. You shouldn't be going, oh, why is he doing this? Oh, the algorithm hates me, which is a lot of people do. They go, oh, the algorithm hates me. TikTok hates me. This is them. I'm not doing anything. They sit there in the stream going, hmm, what's going yeah. on? Why are they doing it? What I do uh, quite extensively is I break down every to the second of what they've done. Yeah. So I, when, for instance, if you look at my channel at the moment, I'm going for a big shift in my content yeah, yeah. to like video news and tech news and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I watch other creators who are similar size, smaller and larger. When I say down, I break down their videos, I break down, I will download their video. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in Premiere Pro and I will literally to the second go through frame by frame. How mm -hmm. many frames they have until this starts? How many frames they have to this starts? How many frames they have to this? What do they do for the text? At what point are they saying that word? Is the subtitle coming on or is it coming on afterwards? And yeah. I break down mathematically everything to do with the video. Mm -hmm. And then I will literally put out points and I will try to implement certain points in my own video. Yeah. And I also do it as well. It's like, you don't want to just break it down and copy them because that's an awful thing to do. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is put your own spin. And part of my own spin is doing a culmination. Yeah. So I will look and I'll go, I've got this person, this person, this person, this person. I like this bit, this bit, this bit, yeah. and this bit. I'll put it in and then I'll fin finish the video and go, you know what? I have this idea that will make look really good that I'll put in. So like, if you look at my videos, my last two videos, um, I started off basically, I, I was looking at other creators, da, 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 and as well, it's like, you should keep posting the videos. You shouldn't just go like, I'm gonna wait until I get the perfect video. Yeah, just yeah. keep posting, keep posting and improve in every video. But I basically have started doing it. So at the start and the end, it's the game's logo. Yeah. So that when the video finishes, it loops around. Yeah. And it also means that the image on the front of the, the thumbnail on TikTok is the image of the game. Yeah. Because I, I saw other creators and it's them at the start. I saw other people and they're like big techs. Yeah. And I looked at them and went, that's cool. But bottom line is, when it comes to content, bar your closest fan base, everybody else that this video has been put out to doesn't care about you as a person. Yeah. And the first thing they wanted to see is whatever the video is about. Yeah. And this is just stuff from, from me looking into it. So that's why my videos now, and to be honest, by like two weeks later, this might've changed yeah, because yeah. I'm always testing. But that's that starting bit is like, here's the game. Yeah. And then it's like, I treat that first like three, four seconds as a like newspaper article headline. Yeah, yeah. Like literally, it's like um, well, think, Spider Man think, fans yeah, have been yeah. screwed. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how it starts, and then it talks, and that's you've got to see it like a newspaper. And this is what I mean, meticulous. And all of that's come from literally in the last two, three weeks. I mean, breaking down some of the biggest creators. I even got in contact with one of the creators who's got like half a mil, yeah. and she's an amazing creator. Joined a Discord, messaged her, asked her meticulously loads of questions. What do you do? Da, 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 yeah, da, yeah. And then tried to implement parts to help myself. So that's the kind of stuff that you should be doing. Yeah, yeah. I think the the, the one of the interesting things that I found is you know as you go through this and you go to a lot right 
that you learn stuff like right i need to have a hook at the beginning of the video i need to have a payoff you start to look into all of those different things mm. that good creators are doing that on, on the front of it look you know you don't notice them necessarily consciously but when you start to look into them they're there one of the things that i realized is, is exactly what you just said is you go at, at the start i was just going right what, what's my what's my kind of verbal hook what i'm actually saying then i thought then i realized oh the good guys they're not just doing the verbal hook they're also laying the visual hook over at the top of that on that first four five mm. seconds as well and that looping stuff is is really powerful as well because it gives you that that second playthrough even if they don't go all the way through even if they only go four or five yeah. seconds it's like yeah, like 101 yes. percent rather than 96 percent and tiktok's like send... oh people are watching this more than once therefore yeah we, we exactly and I, and that thing that you said as well of your own um your own opinion i'm i also made the decision a little little while ago probably maybe based on some similar inspirations you know it's quite a it's quite a it's quite a small space when you actually look at it in terms of people that you're looking at and started doing yeah. more gaming news stuff a little while ago um which means that there's like four or five people where it's like oh we've all posted about the same thing right because there's yeah we're all getting our information from various sources um, but it's always interesting to go, oh, that's that guy's spin on it. That's that guy's. And what's mm. interesting about it to me is they go, well, the people who are watching um, Grumpy's videos, even though me and him produce that same video, the people who are watching his video, they're getting a different thing. And also they they want his spin on it. The people who are watching my video, maybe they want my spin yeah. on it. Yeah. And I think one of the interesting things that I saw, one of my biggest videos was just about when PlayStation gave that... Um, the 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 grayscale ps5 to the, the ceo it was just it's just a playstation 5 in the style of the original playstation and that's basically what everyone was saying and i thought actually it's a really rare playstation that's what i think it is that was my opinion yeah so i started <laughs> off like this is the rarest playstation on the planet <laughs> and that video went really big and there was like you know 10 of the people that had done exactly the same video slightly different hook slightly different opinion and they all went to varying levels but i think that's the interesting thing is like what what do i have to say about this what's my opinion on this thing it's also one thing that's really important is you you need to know who your target audience is mm -hmm. so you need to when it comes to doing a bit of news you need to sit there and go who am i pitching this video to and why am i pitching it to them so the reason why i've made the change is essentially to make this full time i have said for a long time that you are going to be able to sustain it through sponsorships mm -hmm. through working with companies so in my mind, I'm like, I need to pitch this in a way that a company's going to watch it and go, oh, I want my game there. Yeah. Oh, I want my thing being covered, which is why, like, I know I did, like, for instance, the Spider-Man. There's a little bit of a negative of like, oh, we've missed out. But typically, and I, I'm going to do this on purpose and I don't care if people are upset about it, I won't badmouth a game. Mm. Because I don't want a company to watch it and go, oh, well, he's just talking smack about this game, so I don't want to use him. Yeah, yeah. I, my target audience isn't necessarily the viewer. I'm trying to showcase the game in a way that companies will want to have their game showcased. Yeah. I th I think, which is I think, quite a, a different take. Most people go, oh, I've got, like I say, a 20-year-old is who my target audience is. And I'm like, no, a company yeah. is who my target audience is. And, and also I think you know whether whether it's conscious or subconscious doing that creates a, a kind of divisive conversation in in the chat as well because you always yeah. get the guy that come in and go i did that th i did that thing about the playstation and, and i had so many people in my chat it was a really positive video about this was a great mm. gift for the ceo so many people in the chat like uh slagging off the ceo of playstation i'm like yeah. i don't really I, it makes no difference to me either way but i'm glad <laughs> to have the conversation happening within my video you know that that it's created that conversation yeah the chat the comment section is um it's it's crazy to be honest with you yeah like most of the people in the comment section they don't really know what they're talking about. <laughs> they're very emotional they're very like if you don't believe what I believe, you're the enemy. For sure. And there's a, we've almost lost as a civilization this ability to have discussions and come to conclusions and have debates and stuff without it being me against you. Yeah. It seems to be like everything nowadays is like, this is why I believe, this is what you believe, and because of that, we can't be friends. Yeah. Because of that, we can't be on the same side. You're the enemy because you think this. And I find it very, it's very sad. Also, I think nu nuance is... There's a couple of things with online, right? There's anonymity, which is, you know, we wouldn't be having a conversation. We wouldn't be having the conversation that we're having online face-to-face. -face. You wouldn't, 
you know, you wouldn't walk up into the street and yeah. say, hey, bold, you wouldn't point at me and say that, which is yeah. what I get daily in comments. Um, <laughs> and, and so there's that anonymity there. And I think also nuance is, is really difficult, not just written, being nuanced in the written form is very difficult anyway. And most mm. of the people in comment sections aren't trying to be nuanced they're, like you say they're very much no this is this is the truth yeah it's also the fact that like on like for instance twitter's one of them where you have like the community spaces and stuff like that like mm -hmm. you you watch stuff you follow stuff it the more you watch it the algorithm feeds it it's going you've watched 100 percent of a video about how spider-man is the worst superhero and then when they've put a video on you that spider man's the best video uh superhero you've only watched 10 percent of that video yeah so we're going to keep feeding you videos saying how bad spider-man is yeah you then see a video say that the one that it tests something new and he goes, oh, how do you like this video? We go, Spider-Man's the best. You've just watched 10 videos to tell you the worst. He's the worst. So you, and you, you're you on that side. You've got reinforced on that side. You feel like there's many people backing you of that. You then see a video that does the other and you go in the comments and go, oh, you're wrong. <laughs> but because a lot of them aren't, there's only so many le words you can put in. There's only so much you can do. Yeah. A lot of stuff gets misconstrued that they'll throw in just the, you're wrong, you're an idiot, bomb. Yeah. And it's just like, because it's the quickest, easiest way for them to put it. And you sit there and you just go, if you were having a discussion, if you were literally listening to videos on both sides of the argument and you could feel and understand both sides, <laughs> then maybe it wouldn't be so me against you. And I really typically dislike the comment sections of videos because of that yeah. like i will read the comments from time to time yeah um and i'll reply to them when i get time but i have so little amount of time it's yeah. not me going oh someone's done a comment and i don't want to reply half the time i'm just like i don't have time to siphon through hundreds or sometimes thousands of comments yeah. To reply to someone telling me that I'm the worst human in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is interesting because I, I went through a little, I think with, with creation or anything you're doing where you're testing like your creative boundaries, you test different things out and you go, oh, let me give that a try. Yeah. I wonder if I enjoy this. I'd seen some creators where they like, their whole content strategy is uh, comment replies, video replies to comments, mm. particularly negative replies where it's like, you know, I'm going to reply to this and it's going to become yeah, a Yeah, it's to feed the algorithm so they get more com yeah. comments. And every time someone goes back to comment, it replays the video in the background. So yeah. they spend longer typing. They're actually just re-watching the video yeah. without even watching it. Yeah, and I, I tried that for a little bit and I was like, this is this is making me really sad. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. Mental health problem in content creation, I generally believe in probably a few years, it might be longer, yeah. it's going to be a real big... Um, outlook at how content creators are being treated yeah. and how awful they're being treated i i say to my chat a lot when i'm live how you talk to me is how i talk to you yeah. if you're horrible and blunt and nasty mm. i'll just be blunt back yeah. if you're nice and kind i'll be kind back i reflect upon you as you treat me yeah yeah because i'm a human being and i always say it's like i'm a human being i'm just a normal person mm -hmm. And I, ha there's no need to speak to me like this. And if I was in the street and someone was talked to me horribly, I am blunt that I would be horrible back to them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I just see it as like, are you may have that thing that you're behind the phone on the message, but my mind is like, whatever I'm saying, there's every chance I'm gonna be walking down the street and someone's gonna recognize me and they're gonna come up to me and say it to my face. Yeah, yeah. It's and I and, and no matter who they are, I'm, I am prepared to sit there and go, yeah, I'll give you that back. Like I don't care. Yeah. It is what it is. But a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are like, they'll quiver, they hide, they run away. And they, they, but then they go on their messages and they, they type in lies and spread stuff and yeah. mean comments and stuff like that. So you, you at the end of the day, and as the content creators are just humans. Yeah. We are all just human beings. We're trying to do a job. You wouldn't have your plumber come round and sit there and you just go, huh, you're bald. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just wouldn't. It's... You wouldn't have them come in and say they're fixing your pipe and you're like, bald, bald, bald. Yeah. You just wouldn't do that. So why would you do it to someone that's trying to entertain you all? Yeah, that's... Like, we're just doing a job that's the odd thing i think and i think you, you know it, the challenge with it is essentially your job as a creator certainly within within the the remit of social media platforms is fundamentally to produce uh content that you think is good or entertaining and you're essentially doing that for free and then you do other things outside of that actual content creation in order to fund the creation of that content so you know yeah. sometimes i get people come into my live and they're like what, what why would I pay? Why would I pay five pounds a sub to someone to do this, that, and the other? And I'm like, well, these are some of the benefits that you get within the live stream, but also you get to like all of the content that I put out for free 
that's essentially you mm. going i'm going to give you a bit of money to to pay for that content yeah. you know what i mean it's my my favorite is like why would i sub to play with you when i could just play with my mates and i'm like well go play with your yeah, friends so then why the hell are you even here yeah, exactly, like yeah. as a kid i would literally be playing with my mates so like yeah, what yeah. the hell is your problem like why are you having to go at me those just go people and play who with say them. that though are always the people that ask you to play first right they're like oh can i play and yeah. you go hey well, i'm playing with subscribers today and they go, why? Why would I? I was like, well, you asked. Yeah. You asked to play. Yeah. So. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say, can you play with me? But can you pay? <laughs> You've asked yeah. for this. It's funny. But the the whole thing of like the value, the way I see it, like I through trial and error, through making mistakes and stuff. Now I see it as a payment, a transaction. Yeah, exactly. So I have it. You can see like the nano leaves behind me. Mm -hmm. When someone donates, they change color. Yeah. Higher donations create sound alerts. Yeah. And they get crazier and longer as the the higher the donations go. Yeah. I see myself as a shop front. Yeah. So if you're going to give money, you're getting something returned. You're going to pay a monthly subscription. This is what you get. Netflix gives you this. I give you this. Yeah. If you pay the individual donations, it does this. I also have it like on the screen now where it shows the top three donators. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, if you want to be on the screen as a donator, you donate. Exactly. I never say to people that they have to do any of this stuff. There's so much interaction that's free. But if you want to do part of the paid stuff. Yeah, You've got to pay. Different ways it's to support, and you, you get to choose which one it is for you. Well, it's a shop, isn't it? Exactly. It's a shop. It's that there's free items that you can go and shop at, and you can go and collect the free stuff. And if you want the paid stuff, you've got to go and pay the money. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I never, I try to make my streams, and I think this is really important. You should always have it inclusive, so no one looks in and goes, "Well, I can't do anything unless I pay money." Mm -hmm. There should always be something for them to do. Even if in your mind it's you talking back, so you'll talk to your chat a lot, yeah. that's what they're getting. For free, they're getting interaction with you. There should always be something for them to do. Yeah. They shouldn't just arrive and go, I've only got sub chat, I'm only playing with subs, subs only, get wrecked. Yeah. Because the amount of, to be honest with you, the amount of kids who have no money that just want to be part of something yeah, is yeah. insane. Exactly. Yeah. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't discriminate against these people, but... The issue, there, there, there does need to be a level of like if you want to do this full time you need to earn money exactly, it's just yeah. as simple as that so what was and the... to be honest as well oh, so i was going to say with content creation you need to earn money from different revenues yes okay. it's really important because if one thing goes under and you are full time you are in the doghouse yeah, yeah. you need yeah. multiple forms of revenue so if one thing goes down you've got multiple sp places yeah, yeah so what was the point at which because presumably there was there was a time where you were like you know you talked about i'm going to post once a week i'm sure i'm sure there's times where you go i wish i was i wish i was back in those days where it was a once a week scenario <laughs> um and and you know that snowballs and you start to do it uh, more significantly like was there a specific point one of the things i'm always interested in is like how much intent do you put behind like growing your audience and growing your community because i think and i certainly probably had this opinion is that people just kind of posted online and then some people blew up and they got big amount of followers and it kind of snowballed <laughs> for them without them really thinking about it now being in the space i'm, I'm like actually I, ha I have real kind of i've built building a strategy around this is this is how i'm going to grow my audience mm. this is how i'm going to grow my views this is how i'm going to grow my subscriptions all of those things was there a point for you where you went right I, I really need to be a bit more kind of structured with this and go these are the things that i'm going to do and kind of run your content more as a this is a business with a strategy behind it rather than just going i enjoy i enjoy creating videos yeah i feel like there was a, a key point when i realized like this could do something for me and that was um with kick so yes. when kick did their they basically when kick hit and went bloody viral and were going crazy and they went look we're gonna pay our creators a monthly or hourly wage mm -hmm. at that point i went ha oh, i could do this full time you know mm -hmm. like if i could get an hourly wage i do this or that before that i'd never considered it like i'd always I, the only reason for instance like um so with donations for instance in streams mm -hmm. i used to tell people don't donate yeah. i hated it i was like i don't want the money it feels horrible i don't want it yeah. never told people subscriptions no go away don't want it mm -hmm. i was like i don't need money from you guys i do a good job mm -hmm. I, I i earn well work i'm not doing this full time this is something fun build a community i give back quite a bit of money mm -hmm. all good golden and then when kick would did that i was like oh i could put some plans in place mm -hmm. um and by the way as well i changed the donation side of things because i was told that by tiktok themselves you get donations you get more viewers yeah 
this was very early on and i was told that and i was like okay cool so i started to get in donations but i had incentives like you donate this this happens yeah. i had it so you could play music you pick the music through donations mm -hmm. but that was it like the money i got went straight back in the community and then some i was i've always lost money <laughs> yeah um and i've spent literal thousands of pounds doing content over the four years yeah. and i've never made more than i've lost i'm like minus about 10 grand yeah. at this point it's ridiculous but um, it literally hit that point. That I was like, oh, my God, with Kick, I was like, if I can get an hourly wage, I'm basically on the books. Like, yeah. I could do this full time. Like, I love this. I just at work as well finished like a massive project. And I was like, you know, what? I could I could do this. Mm -hmm. That didn't pay off, unfortunately. But it gave me time to really kind of review everything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I kind of got that idea in my head now. Like, this is something I could do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I really I have changed everything to be the point and i'm at a situation now where me and my partner we're getting married in september congrats we're gonna be having to thank you we're gonna be looking to have kids after that yeah so i've got until realistically it could not shop and change but realistically tell about next september yeah to get her out of work i earn significantly more yeah but we can't have both of us working um both of us doing childcare so basically our hours would be opposite yeah whilst also having a uh, whilst i'm also streaming yeah the, the uh, there's not enough hours yeah. so i'd either need to give her streaming or i can earn enough that she doesn't need to work mm -hmm. and then i can continue doing streaming full-time and well not full-time but streaming as a job and working as a job yeah so i've got a deadline date and that has really kind of gone from first gear to content creation to fifth gear mm -hmm. of streaming 30 hours a week yeah doing videos every day, contacting companies, researching like hell, had a really serious conversation with my partner and said, look, I need to be able to do this everything that I've got because if it hits September and I've looked back and go, oh, well, I wish I had done that. I could have done this. Mm -hmm. I will never forgive myself. Whereas if I get to September and it just hasn't happened and I've done everything, I can go, yeah. Yeah, that, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, first of all, the, I think that I often get asked the question, um, what does Mrs. Charm think about you? I've got a little cabin at the end of the garden. This is where I'm in at the moment. So <laughs> I'm literally out of the house. What, do, what, is, like, what does she think about you being down here all the time? And I said, well, one, she's working up there. Like I'm down, I'm, I'm working a set number of hours in yeah. the same way that she is. So it's not really changed that much for her since I lost my job. But the other thing we did is I sat down exactly the same as you said. We sat down and I said, look, this is something that I think I'd like to do. Before I, mm. before I lost my job and I was kind of, I said, but if I want to do it, I need, like, people need to know when I'm going to be live. I need to know when I'm going to be live. I need a schedule. And we sat down and we, we mm. worked it out. And we agreed together, this is what's possible within the remit of yeah. our relationship. I've done it the opposite way around. I've had kids first and then we're getting married. You're doing oh, it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we have, I have these responsibilities. I need, I need to, uh, in my personal life, and it's like, well, how do we make this work? Um, and then, very similar to you, uh, well, it's a slightly different situation, but... Uh, you know a, an event occurs that makes you go ah this i want to be here or i yeah. need to be here by this time yeah it's like what it's like i have to be here that's it and it's like the the thing is as well i don't know about you but i find that when you have that date everything just clocks into fifth gear and you almost like i generally it's on my mind a lot and i generally not panic about it but i'm scared yeah like, it's a good i'm it's terrified good, i look at it scared. and it's a good fear yeah. yeah it's a good fear it makes me it makes me when i'm sitting there and i go Oh, I've got to go live later. Instead of you sitting there for an extra 10 minutes and then it's 15 and then you're on TikTok and it's half an hour later and you go, oh, I'm running late, oh, I'll go live tomorrow. Instead of like, oh, I need to go live. Yeah. And it's like phone straight away. I come in like, I'll scoff down dinner, plates done, straight over, going live. There's no, oh, do you know what? I'm just like, mate, because if I give up this one, I could give up next one. Yeah. And then it's three months down the line and I might as well just quit then. Exactly. So yeah. like. Well, that's the, the interesting thing is we have, me and my fiance have lunch today every day she works from home most days and we used to have lunch together every day when i was working um mm. but when i was working i'd be like oh should we watch another episode of this you know we take a take an hour lunch take an hour and a half lunch now i'm like i've i've got to go i've got uh, i've got a stream to get off yeah. I've got this content to edit. like i've got things to do and she's like should we watch one more episode I'm like, oh, no sorry i can't i've got i'm too busy <laughs> I'm, I'm quite lucky that I managed to, and this was through like a year of trying to get my partner to play Fortnite. Yes. So her setup is there. Her setup is like arms reach Yeah, when I'm watching your mine. stream up and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could turn a lot because she's right there. She So she's got a, an amazing setup. She's got all that stuff right next to me. Yeah. So I'm lucky. What I've managed to get her into Fortnite, it means that when I'm live this much, 
she doesn't feel like she's just sat over there yes, doing nothing. Yes. She feels like she's part of the community. Like I, like when EGX last year, we went and met a load of community members. She was there. Yeah. She's made good friends with some of the members. Yeah. She feels really embedded. She feels like quite. An, I make a really big point to my community as well. Like they can make like have a laugh with me, make fun and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm always like, if you treat the queen wrong, <laughs> you're in trouble. I'm always like, I'm the court jester. I'm just the face of this operation. But it, like, and I'll I'll take digs and stuff like that. But I'm always like, you do realize like for her, there's like a line in the sand. <laughs> yeah. You cross that, you're gone from everything. You lose access to everything in the community. And they're all very understanding and like they adore her. And it's fantastic. It's how I want it. Yeah. But it is that thing of like, I've had to drag her kicking and screaming to join in yeah. and now she's a part of it and it allows me to where you said you watch a TV show or whatever yeah. at lunch I don't get that I've had a membership for Odeon for a while now the last one we went to watch was in October Yeah. the last two things we have even done together one of them was to the wedding on Saturday and the other one was to go to the Princess Peach Nintendo event on Tuesday yes. apart from that we don't sit there and watch film or watch tv show together do any of that stuff because i'm just busy and it's all on me but i am outstandingly busy yeah i will literally come home have dinner i change my work hours so that i could then record a video edit a video post a video go live finish a live message people thank you sort out the last bits go to bed yeah yeah and when lunch break, I come back home from lunch i come back home i write a script and find the theme of what my video is going to be yes and that's it. My whole like 45 minutes I'm at home, I'm eating and I'm writing scripts. And a lot of it's me looking through the internet, trying to find a video idea, go, that's going to bang. I'll find the videos I need for it. I'll write the script for it, yep. come back. And then that's kind of ready because it saves me a bit of time. Nice. That's like my, my day is just I like, feel like that's what you've got to, got to do though when you go, well, I want this to be a career. Is that, And I had the same conversation. It's like, listen, it's for a long time. Like, for example, I would never... We're doing this on, um, what day is it? Sunday today. Um, mm. This is not usually a day I do stuff, but I'm like, listen, I want to do these things and there's going to be times where we, I have to sacrifice other things in, to enable yeah. this. And again, it's all about having that conversation and having, it's definitely easier with the buy-in from your, from your partner, yeah. right? Also, one of the things that I think is quite important with this is like, when you're trying new things and you're trying to get something to work, mm -hmm. That is a good time that if you do want to take your foot off the gas a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like I was at the point where my streams weren't doing very well. Things weren't going great. So I was like, I reduced my days. I went from seven days to five days. Mm -hmm. I was having a bit more. I was ending some streams early because they weren't doing particularly well and spending time with my partner. I was ending the stream earlier. And instead of just sitting there live doing nothing, I was watching other people's lives, trying to work out the ideas mm -hmm. that I could do. And then the second something hits, that's when you go, yeah, seven days a week. Now we're back to streaming. Yeah fifth gear let's go we've got a double triple quadruple down on this one idea yeah because it's trending it's viral it's banging the second it stops that's when you go okay uh, back into second it, gear try and find some bits it is a never-ending I, I i've talked about this a few Chase. times but it's like <laughs> there is there is never a point when you're done like you know my initial goal was for, for tiktok for example was like let me get to that 10k so i can monetize and and then i hit 10k and i was like oh that's I mean, I knew it on an intellectual level. I knew that wasn't the end. I knew there would be more after that. But 10k came and went, and I was like, "Ah, I need, I need, I need to continue on." Like, there's no, there's no magic thing that happens where it's like, "Well, you're a millionaire now. You know, everything's yeah. going perfectly." It's like, "Oh, this is a continuous thing, and I've got to continue mm. to push on. I've got to find that next idea." Yeah, that's the thing. Like for me, I, I'm a, I, when you said about comparing other people who are like your size. Mm -hmm. I have a really bad trait of I compare myself to the top yeah. creators, yeah, yeah. the people who are sat there full time making lots of money. Mm -hmm. They're the people I compare to because in my mind, and this might quite seem quite bad, but if I look at a creator that's like around my size or a bit smaller or a bit bigger when it comes to comparisons, not breaking down their content, but comparisons, mm -hmm. I straight away look and go, well, you're where you are because you're where you are. Mm -hmm. And you might grow, but like you're going on the up yeah i'm looking at my views going okay i'm hitting say 50 people in the stream yeah. and i and when i'm comparing and i'm feeling crap about myself mm -hmm. 
is because I'm looking at the guys going with five mil subscribers sat on 5k like a ninja yeah, and I'm going oh that's that how do I get there what's he doing like yeah. how's this happening they're the when I when I look at other creators around my size and breaking down what they're doing when I'm sitting there wanting to feel horrible about myself I'm looking at the top creators because that's where I want to be that's where I feel like I'm heading in that direction that's where I feel like I'm growing yeah. towards and I think that the the, the realisation I think that you, certainly that I came to anyway is like you, you said it earlier content creators are just human right and the ninjas and the Mr. Beasts and the there's, there's definitely they, they have huge talent right and they have there's, there's yeah they have more of an understanding of the craft of what we do than the general public gives them gives mm. them credit for you know I think Mr. Beast for example I think the general public would look at him and just go well he's he just he just made it big on YouTube and then actually yeah. when you look into it you go this guy really put the work in to figure out what YouTube yeah. was and figured it out um, but they are still people who who did a thing like it is it is accessible yeah there is also an element of luck I believe yeah so I generally believe like I, I believe in making your own luck mm -hmm. which is the fact of like you put yourself in the position where things are going to go your way you're in the best place possible. Yeah. It's why when I used to stream to zero viewers, I would do everything I could and have everything in place. So if a viewer's there, everything is set up for me to be the best streamer I can be for that person yeah. because you make your own luck. So say, for instance, you're sat on zero viewers on Twitch and Ninja does raid you and you've suddenly got 5,000 viewers, mm -hmm. you're set up in the best possible place mm -hmm. to capitalize on that because if you don't have that part where you're sat there to make your own luck like for instance i'm not gonna lie so when i i, I did a little transition on twitch for a little while mm -hmm. uh, which i'm still kind of doing at the moment and i was siphoning through to raid to people mm -hmm. and i was like oh yes look on the lowest creators and we'll raid someone with no viewers because it'd be quite nice yeah. and i didn't want to say this was a lie but i ended up kind of saying this i looked for it and i went i can see why they're all on zero viewers yeah. Because none of them are in a situation where they are put themselves in the best place where someone with 20 viewers, 50 viewers, whatever, who wants to raid them, wants to raid them. Yeah. Because I looked at him and went, you've got no camera, your mic's crap, you're not talking to audience, you're not doing this, you're da yeah. da 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 and you just go like, there's a reason why they raid bigger people is because you haven't put yourself in a place where you're going to capitalize on this luck. And that's why I look at it and go like, I am doing everything I can so that when that luck fountain starts draining, I can capitalize on it as much as possible. Where someone might go, I've been raided. I've got 5,000 views. I've got 20 new followers because it's just, you're just going to get some anyway. Whereas you're in the best place scenario. So now you've got 5,000 views and you've hit 500 followers for me. Yeah. Because they go, actually, this guy's a cool streamer. Yeah, yeah. This guy's got a really good setup. This guy's got interaction. I love his channel points. I love what he's doing with this. This is great. Yeah, stay here. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think is quite important. And even TikTok. TikTok will just flood viewers at you. Yeah. But if you're not in the best situation for when it turns on that tap, they flood straight out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's always difficult when you're first starting out. And, there, you know, this, I think this, everyone starts streaming to zero viewers, right? Everyone, That's where everyone starts. Yeah. But sitting because you feel like an idiot essentially because you're sat in a room on your own there's nobody watching you and you're sat you're sat there talking like like people are there or you know that's what you try to develop yeah. to do you, you talk through the game you talk to you talk to yourself you you know you have to mm. do all of that like you say for when someone does come in you're alone it's a weird thing with content because you start off alone yeah because you've got no viewers so you're trying to do you're trying to make something entertaining yeah. and this is why as well i think it's such an important journey to do the journey properly because mm -hmm. you start off alone and you have to develop the skills to entertain when no one's there mm -hmm. you then get to the point where you have anywhere from five to kind of 50 viewers i'd say yeah. where you have a community you have chat you can talk mm -hmm. you've got that thing you're then part of something bigger than you you're not relying on yourself and then when you kind of get high in that the chat is so mad you go alone again yeah yeah so all the skills that you built of keeping entertainment when no one's there, it's the same skills you need to keeping people when everyone's there yeah. and you can't talk to chat. It's, so it's really important. Those periods when you're in zero viewers is almost more important than when you have a community on the 5 to 50. Because when you're 5 to 50, really, you just bounce off chat and you're not doing yeah. much. You're playing your game, you're just on a chat. And it's so easy. Yeah. It's the easiest yeah, yeah. time. The part when you actually get to the point where your chat is so wild, you can't talk to chat. And you're going... Oh, it's all on me again. Yeah. 
if you've skipped over that first phase where you had to learn how to be good yeah. to get that initial couple of viewers, you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know how to do yeah, it yeah. because you just had chat. It's an interesting... So actually streaming to zero viewers is very, very important. Yeah, there's been a couple of times, you know, there's a couple of points in a couple of games that you can pretty much guarantee where you go. You know, I, I know if I go on and play the, the final mission in Red Dead Redemption 2, there will be a thousand people in there. There's been a couple of times whilst yeah. I've been playing and there's a real there's a real kind of lure to go, I'll just do that all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it you're absolutely right. It's impossible. And I, and I think that's... it's You start to understand how some of these bigger streamers sometimes feel like they're less interactive because it is just impossible to follow the chat because it is yeah. moving quicker than you can read it. I remember seeing something that someone uh, did a video on TikTok. It was just through siphoning through, and it was basically a hate video on Ninja. Yeah. Because he doesn't talk to chat and he doesn't appreciate his gifts. And I just sat there and was like, if you were in his position and you had five thousand people, mm -hmm. like in your chat, you would have an easy, easy one thousand to type in. Yeah. Have you ever had a, a WhatsApp group when there's ten of you and everyone's joking <laughs> and it's just going through? You can't get a message in. I leave because those. it's crazy. I leave those. <laughs> and yeah, and now you're talking about a thousand people messaging. Yeah. Like you can't, you can't interact. Yeah. All you can do is you might pick out the odd message where you'll see something and it's got to be a short message because it flows so quickly. Yeah. But you can't, like, it just is what it is. And what you were saying with the Red Dead thing, like, there are certain things that you're just guaranteed views. For instance, Fortnite, if the servers are down and everyone's waiting for when they to go up, go live. Yeah. Like, you bang for views. Because no one's playing Fortnite, they just want to know a question. Yeah. If you're doing an event, Fortnite, it bangs. Yeah. If you're finishing a game, like I finished Hogwarts Legacy, yeah. was one of my greatest moments because I had, like, 680 people in my stream. At the time, I hadn't got any more than, like, 50, 100. Yeah. And then it's 680 people and I completed the final boss. And I was like, I feel like I'm going to cry. This is such an insane yes, moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 but you were finishing the game and then the game's finished. You're like, oh, back down to normal low yeah, views. Yeah. And you're like, well, and this is what's quite important with content is you need to figure out to capitalize when something trending, something great's going. But you also need to figure out how you can maintain that every stream yep. because you need to be not just doing trending stuff. You need to have that kind of consistency yeah you have to have your core cool. you have to have the people that are going to stay there not for the game but they're there because yeah. of you yeah well yes and no to be honest with you if you can especially with tiktok if you can just maintain where you've hit tiktok's algorithm mm -hmm. where they will just continuously send people someone joins and leaves someone joins and leaves yeah. of the say two thousand people you get joined you might get one person that sticks yeah. around because i think it's quite cool yeah yeah it's fine like you're flooding people and that's TikTok's algorithm yeah. unlocking rather than you people there for yeah, you yeah. because you get made. There is a difference between t Twitch and TikTok, but like you see, I see YouTubers who sit in there like with a mil subs, mm -hmm. every video hits like 15 mil. Yeah. They don't know their audience. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've never met anyone in their fan base. Mm. They have a fan base, but you join the discords. It's like a hundred people and it's dead. Yeah. I think that's, that's. You sit there and you go, do you go to events? They go, yeah, but I never meet anyone. Yeah. They just walk around like it's normal because they don't know anyone. So they haven't built a community, but they don't need to because they've provided something that the algorithm loves and it puts it every single time. It gets you views every single time and it brings in money every single time. And sponsorships go, I want that level yeah. of exposure. So they come to you because they see a consistency. I think they, there's, I, I say this to my community a lot, is the content is like, you watching a sitcom it's you watching a tv series the streams are that's that's the live show that's the you know that's the difference between the two and i suppose mm. if you only do one if you only produce content and you kind of put it out and it's not a live thing then you are you are never gonna know your audience as you're never gonna know them on an individual level you know there'll be people in your yeah. chat where you're like i know what your dog had for dinner last night you know you know some <laughs> yeah. people to a real high degree and then there's others that are a bit more casual but well, it's this weird thing that you can build a repertoire with certain members mm -hmm. where you you actually get to know them and you become friends with mm -hmm. them. But a lot of it is like you're in front of the camera. You're talking about your day to day. The person behind the camera looks at it and goes like, I know what he had for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I know his dog's name. I know this. He's my friend. Yeah, there's uh, that, that happens. And for you, they've never even left a comment in your chat. Yeah. So for you, 
you don't know them. Yeah. You don't even know they're a viewer. But they sit there and they go, oh, my friend's gone live today. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's an insulting or a bad thing, but like this is the difference. Is like there are certain members I've made fr- like really good friends with, like members of my community. Quite often I make them mods mm-hmm. and I have more interaction. I have mod nights where I jump in and we play Fortnite together. We're on mic so we can get to know each other better yeah. because I find that's quite an important thing is giving back to them. But you do get people and they're like, oh, I haven't seen you in ages. How have you been? And I'm just looking at going, yeah. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> and they're like, how's the cat doing? You're like, she's doing good. <laughs> you clearly know I have a cat. And they're like, did this end up happening? How was the dentist that you were going to last week? How was this? And you're like, it's good, thanks, mate. Like, it's great. But then you're also a little bit like, they talk to you like you're their best friend. And for you, a part of it's like, I I don't know who you yeah. are. It's, and it's not a bad thing, but it's just also kind of a weird thing. I, I got this from Ethan from the Sidemen. Yeah. He said that he gets people approach him in public and they talk to him like he's their mate. Yeah. They're like, oh, Ethan, mate, how's it going? How's the missus? How's the kid? And he was like, but they don't realize that they watch every one of my videos. Mm-hmm. They watch every one of the Sidemen videos. They watch every one of my live streams. So they know me. But I don't know them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a really weird, a weird thing dynamic, that people need to remember. Yeah. And people get annoyed and they get insulted because they're like, oh, you're doing this now. How could you do this to me? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know who you are. I'm trying to make this full time. What do you mean, how can I do this to you? Because I'm no longer playing your favorite game or I've taken away your favorite feature that you were so happy about. Yeah. <laughs> so the end of the end of last year... I think it was over 100k. It was 100k your goal at the end of last year? Yeah, and, and yeah. You, so that was crazy. So you hit 100k followers last year and, and have continued on. And, um, you, you you're absolutely popping off at the moment. I, you know, it, yeah. pop into your live streams and you know you you've hit on some real great ideas and 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 you know functionality within the live stream and that's really working well for you. So what's what's the net? And I know part of your uh, goal is to to go full time, as you've mentioned on here. Um, what's the next? What's the next thing for you? Where where are you? Where are you kind of so I have towards? Two things yeah. I'm focusing on. One of them is sponsorships. Mm-hmm. So I can't talk about it at the moment, but I've just signed. Well, I, I this is a different. But I signed a contract with Rowcat and Turtle mm-hmm. Beach, so I'm sponsored with yes. them, which is great, phenomenal, love it. I've also like literally the other day signed for another individual sponsorship opportunity. Uh, I'm focused really hard on trying to build the chef platform. I quite a stickler on like you should be thinking months and years, not days and yep. weeks when it comes to content from what you're planning. So I'm working on the content. I'm trying to do more sponsorship stuff so I can have a, a portfolio. If you go, if you imagine yourself like a freelancer, you go with your portfolio to other companies and go, hey, look, hire me. This is what I've done for them. Yep. So that's what I'm trying to work on really hard. That's one thing I'm side one side of it, and then the other side is just the the, the essentially the formula that we've recently kind of come across on TikTok. I'm trying to just test, tweak, improve. It was one of those things as I said we were throwing loads of things against the wall, mm-hmm. something stuck, and now it's that thing of like we've kind of tested it enough that we know what we've done has stuck and it will. St- dick hopefully yeah. unless tiktok changes the algorithm now it's that kind of tweak of like what more can we do with yeah. this what more can we start to implement and a big part of it is is and this is a weird thing it all kind of culminated together at a really good opportunity like i told a mate to try something i told power to try something it banged yeah. but to an extent i looked at it i tried it myself exactly how he did it it didn't work so i went back to his and was like what's different with his mm-hmm. notice something i then had a discussion with someone at tiktok and they sent me over um they basically said like they have a value system for each type of interaction Mm -hmm. so a share a like a comment a gift and they told me all of this and i just looked at it and went okay so the thing that power's doing that's banging this is why it's banging so we can unlock two of the the interactions are done right there what can i do to do the other interactions boom that's done and now i feel like i've done enough lives i've done four lives and i've gone from 118 to 150 something k now followers so I'm like, that's like four lives. Bear in mind, when when I banged over Christmas, over two months, I got 34K followers. Yeah. Now in the space of four days, I've basically done that. The really important thing is, how can we keep this going so that it will happen for months and yeah. months? Because if, and also how can we keep this going so it's not the same thing, so people don't get bored of it? Yeah. 
So at the moment, it's like people doing like the rank in Discord, yeah. but it's like, how, what other games can we implement yeah, this yeah. in? But it's also like, for instance, we've added in things like light goals trigger a jump scare. Yeah, yeah. So likes, that's a whole separate entity. Nothing to do with the others, but it's the interactions. Yeah, yeah. TikTok have a value of the interactions to which ones they find most important. But in my mindset, like, well, if you hold a value of all of these, why don't I just do all of them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, no, I've kind so, of noticed that I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't have a contact at TikTok, but it feels to me like it, it, it kind of goes, follow is the top of the tree. Like I've had videos that have had, you know, I compare two videos where I'm like, this one's got way more likes and stuff, but it's not popping off the same as this one. And then I realized actually what I got was a lot more followers off this video. And that's why it's popped off. It feels like it goes like follow, share comment and then like yeah. it actually feels like the least of i'm them. just finding it now the screenshot and i can i can kind of go through them quickly uh there we go okay so uh their value in ranking order now i don't know like whether one's like 10 percent more 50 yeah, yeah. more but gifts to the top yeah. comments follow subs likes shares right okay interesting so um, but the gifts, what I found quite important, um, was essentially it's not about getting one one thousand gift and then that's it for the stream. Yeah. If you get a hundred gifts, but they're all roses throughout the entirety of the stream consistently, yeah. that is what they're after. They want to see that people are consistently there right. gifting you slowly yeah. over time, so that it just shows and different people. It's not the same people. Yeah. Not you just have one big gifter that constantly comes in and goes, here's a money tree. Yeah bye i'm gone now that's all you've got yeah. they want to see that 10 20 50 60 people are sending you gifts and i think and i they didn't confirm this but i think if you're just constantly putting out like treasure chests and they gift you your own coins back i don't think it values right. it i think it knows if you're just gifting yourself essentially yeah. um so that's one thing gifts making sure you're getting a consistent flow getting the comments getting the follows getting the likes getting the shares and the thing is, TikTok have helped you with certain parts. Mm -hmm. Like, you can do the goodie bag, yeah. which is basically if someone shares your live stream, yeah. you the winner gets 20 coins. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing that for the last two streams. Uh, the stream I did this morning got 1.5K shares. Yeah, yeah. 1,500 shares, which is madness. Yeah. Um, we've unlocked. If you follow, you can then do a command, and it gets you, like, your rank. Yeah, yeah. Like, that two of them comment follows i've done gifts so like i've said it one coin or more changes the lights yeah. also i've got the ranking order yeah. if some people are like try people want to get top spot rank of their donation so they're trying to get yeah. that jump scares for the likes you you pay the 20 coins people share the stream so like really i kind of looked and went okay so you've got all these different measures yeah. and you're saying you've got an importance of them if they're all crushing yeah. it then you should send people yep. and it sounds like a really basic thing but i didn't think of it for two years yeah, yeah. like i i look at a lot of streams and lots of people aren't thinking of it and you actually when you kind of it's one of those things is like it's kind of obvious thing but when someone says it and you go into the top streamers who are consistently yeah. getting the top views and you look at their stream you go oh yeah well it makes sense because their comments are popping off and their followers are popping off and their likes are popping off and they're getting loads of gifts from different people yeah. And you go, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And it's a really important thing of like that, like the engagement yeah. is what they care about. Whereas like Twitch, it wouldn't work on Twitch because Twitch don't care. Yeah. Twitch don't care because they don't put people in front of you. Twitch, if you brought 100 people over from TikTok, yeah. 100 viewers, and you had 100, Twitch would care. Yeah. And they would put you more towards people because you brought people. But if you're selling zero people viewers, and suddenly you get like all the stuff starts happening or you sat on 10, they, they wouldn't care. Yeah. And that's the thing is you've got to learn, every platform has its own algorithm. Every platform has its own thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have a really good understanding of all of them, but Instagram, I, I don't understand. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram's a, a, a weird one for me. It's, you know, sometimes, it, sometimes just replicating TikTok content will work really well. Sometimes it, it doesn't work at all. Um, don't get it at all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. Uh, the one I don't get is it, like my YouTube shorts just do absolutely nothing. And uh, I've got friends who, you know, post videos and they three, four K per video and, and some people significantly more. And they're like, dude, I don't know why. I don't know why you're some, something is happening on your YouTube that's <laughs> holding you back. 
so I'll go through the process of trying to figure that out. But yeah, it's it's definitely a process with every one of these platforms. It's it's learning a new thing every single time and going right. How, yeah. how do I crack this? What is the formula for this? What's the structure? And then going, um, you know, then adding that to your workload of oh, I need to do a slightly different edit for this, or I need to do a slightly different version for this. You know, it's. See, what's interesting is when I started out, I did. Um, YouTube was my main bread and yeah. butter. So I did, I learned YouTube for like three years until I stopped just focusing on TikTok. Yeah. TikTok for the first two years with the VR stuff was just a support yeah. line. And I would get videos. I've got videos that hit like five mil views. Yeah. And I just didn't care because I was like, this is just, I, I, if you look at the comments of my like VR top videos, every time someone left a comment, you'd have a reply from me going, check out my YouTube video, check out yeah. my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Because I didn't care about the TikTok. I was like, come over, come yeah. over, come over. And now it's like, I then gave up the YouTube side. I still have it. I still post because companies like to see mm -hmm. you. Uh, they like to see you as a package. They like to see you've got a YouTube channel, a Twitch yeah. channel, a TikTok channel, all those things that do well, um, w as well as having that one kind of like main one. But like, I know, I feel like I understand TikTok, uh, the YouTube very well. I feel like I'm just starting to crack TikTok. Mm -hmm. But again, this isn't me going like I've cracked it because overnight i've gone this bangs let's do yeah. it this is something where i've spent years testing yeah. like and i say this, this is so important your failures are more important your, than your successes mm -hmm. i have failed more times than i can count yeah. honestly the amount of things i have tried and failed at it's unbelievable yeah. i have a rumba over in the corner that i spent 100 quid yeah. on because i thought it'd be a really good thing to stick a camera on a rumba and people could watch the rumba <laughs> failed failed horribly i did worse on that views than i had on that any views yeah. i had done at that time it's uh and, and i think the interesting thing about social platforms in general is what worked yesterday doesn't necessarily work tomorrow like it's yes. sometimes you're relearning and and like you say you're constantly testing things and and even now where you go oh this thing is working right now you go but what does that look like tomorrow how do i tweak that for the next one yeah. how do i improve it and every there's the anxiety around every live of like is it gonna yeah. work this one like even the stuff that's going on right now, like I am pushing hard and I'm doing as many streams as I can, but I fully know that I could go live because I'm going live again later. I know fully live, I can press that live button and then just nothing. Yeah, yeah. But I'm doing everything I've learned, everything I've tried, everything I've, I've studied to make sure that doesn't yeah. happen. So that if it does happen, there should be a change that I can pinpoint and go, oh, this didn't happen because I did yes. that. Because you're, 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 it's, it's working every time and because you're just changing one thing and you're trying to improve like one thing, you're doing slight tweaks, there's something suddenly just goes from like 300 down to two. You go, oh, well, I, I did this and, and that didn't yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> we'll revert back there. <laughs> it's almost like a computer where you suddenly, everything crashes and you just revert back a yeah. day and you go, there we go, it worked here. Well, listen, man, I, uh, I appreciate you taking the time. It's great to... It's great to see your ups and your downs and, and uh, your <laughs> flourishing and, and, and to, to kind of watch you figuring stuff out. I'm, I'm off of one of those people, as I'm sure you are in lots of streams where I'll pop in, you might see my name join and mm. I'll go, I'll, I'll watch for a little bit and then I'll be off. If you're anything like me, uh, you don't have that much time to go through. I used to watch a lot of streamers, yes. but I don't have time to watch my favorite stream i don't even watch my friends but you often see my name pop yeah. up because one of the things i do and i said this is i will literally sit there because i have like i have a spare five yeah. minutes i will go yeah like that on the lives yeah. and the second i see something i haven't seen before yeah. i'll stop and go oh what are they yeah. doing and then i'll look and go oh no that's <laughs> or i'll go oh that's kind of cool yeah. and i'll stop and i'll take a screenshot and then it, do, do, yeah. do, do. i do this weird thing again i'll go through like 50 live streams in the space of about two yeah. minutes because i'm just going do, do, do. and the second something catches my i'll kind of purposely try and zone out yeah. a little bit because the second something catches your attention you go oh what's that then i'm like well if i'm a child with a brain span of an 11 year old no attention yeah. span and i'm going live 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 yeah. ooh that's what i'm after so that's why I, I try and visualize myself as the audience yeah. and so if you see my names pop up in like random live streams oftentimes if i'm gone as quickly as i'm there it's because they haven't caught my yeah. eye to be yeah, honest yeah, that's it. and that's the really thing is like just siphoning through yeah um i did uh, i think the last time i me and you ended up in Kadea's stream together <laughs> i think we were both there yeah. going what's the secret <laughs> tell us the secret yeah well that's because i was going to the news and the gaming yes, yeah. side if you haven't done already she is a phenomenal content oh creator. yeah I've, 
Join her Discord. She's got like a section that she set up for content uh, creators to share ideas and talk. I did, man, I did, yeah. Really, really useful. I, um, she was one of the um, people that I watched that that made me go, "Oh, I think I could have a have a go same. at the new stuff," you know. <laughs> um, and I had spotted you in her stream, and then I, you know, I, I saw that you were starting to do that kind of content as well. I always love mm. it because it's like, oh, I'm really interested to see what other people spin. You often don't have time to go. Like, I think uh, you, you did a Spider-Man video on the same day that I did a Spider-Man video. <laughs> and it's like, this is, these, are too close, these are too close together to be posted to be copies of each other. We've just both found the same bit of news. Yeah, oh, that happens out, you know, all the time. It's, it's, um, and sometimes you catch it before other people, sometimes they do it after. But yeah, it's, it's, um, it's just it's what it is. Like, I, I stand by that if everyone's doing the same sort of thing, you're probably on the right track of something that's going yeah. well um and to be honest with you like it's quite funny actually because legitimately if you look at the people i follow yeah. on tiktok because i used to be able to unfollow i can't unfollow people now oh, really? on tiktok but i used to follow people and unfollow people and it would if you looked at the people that's following yeah. then and you got like all say like 10 of the most recent yeah. ones got all their videos and mash them together that's probably how my <laughs> most recent video looks <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> with me in great, the middle great, great artist steel i think if you can, if you can take stuff that's that you like and then add your own well, spin I, to it it's 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 great i come from an architecture yeah. background with any building in the world you never reinvent the yeah. wheel you take bits of other people's buildings that you love and you apply it we even do literally in architecture they mood yeah. boards where you do a panel and you'll get all these different pictures and you'll have pictures of the ceiling the yeah. pictures of the floor the pictures of the walls the pictures of plants and you have like 20 different pictures and you stow to the client you go this is what it's gonna yeah. look like imagine yeah. this building with this style with this and i do that on my videos i get all these different sections yeah. And I look at them and go, yep, we bring this here. And that, if, I get so many people ask me, go, I want to make videos, but I don't know what to make videos on. Yeah. Like, well, just look at what other people do. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, the, get a camera and put it in front of your face and talk to it about the things that you like. Because until you do that, you don't know how, you don't know how difficult it is to sit and stare at a camera and talk to it like it's, like it's not an inanimate object. It's so difficult. Yeah. But if you're looking for ideas, say you want to do yeah. Fortnite, just, tick, just search on TikTok, Fortnite, click like the most liked videos in the last 24 yeah. hours, go to the very top, look at what they're yeah. doing. That's what's trending. Yeah. That's what's doing yeah. well. Do you want to do that type of content? No. Change it to the last week. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Just like that. That's it. <laughs> Listen, man, I really appreciate you. Uh, thank you. I, you gave me some advice very, very early on when I was just starting out, and I really appreciate that. And it's nice to circle back where you've had you've had <laughs> stratospheric uh, growth and i've had some decent growth as well um maybe we do this again in another year and, and see where we're at <laughs> i'd love to man i love i love talking content i the thing is you get some creators that don't like sharing the ideas some creators who are kind of like me me yeah. me the way i look at it is like there's billions of people on that bloody there's, app there's... if i've got 500 viewers and you've got 500 viewers your 500 viewers are not stolen yeah. from me and i shouldn't have given it to you i'm happy to help people grow i'm happy to speak to people but the biggest issue you've got is trying to pin me down as you know yes. from us we've really had to down to reschedule so many times that's my biggest issue is because i'm so busy no, it's all good i get it man we're doing we're doing uh we're doing wedding prep as well so i know how busy that time is mm. but also there's you know there's no new ideas under the sun and i always try and approach this content content stuff from a place of the there is enough for everyone even if we're all doing yes. the same shit different people are going to find yeah. us and it's like um and also I've, and even sometimes the same people enjoy watching different yeah, perspectives as exactly, you said yeah so, i mean the matters yeah you know i've got a p couple of people that um a couple of other streamer friends as you do you, you make friends with other streamers when you're doing this and the 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 nicest guys out there are always like promote this guy and you all end up promoting each other and it, you know it ends up yeah. being a really nice little group space you can tell a good content creator because they're just yeah. open with the ideas they don't try and hide it because the other ones who are like oh i'm not going to tell them this i'm going to keep this blah, blah, blah. they're not growing yeah. mr b said it perfectly if you learn a hundred things in a yeah. year you know a hundred yeah. things if you and 10 friends all learn a hundred things you've got ten thousand new yeah, things exactly so you grow together man but you get you do also get a lot of toxic people who are like you they'll give you some advice or something and then you'll replicate it and then they go oh you just steal yeah. and you'll suddenly get all their fan base having to go at you and you're like what <laughs> I, uh, it is one of those i remember uh josh dub he did he they all blew up on this like um green brush yeah. thing 
and their fan base every video you posted similar would just slate you and lay into yeah. you and then i saw him do a podcast and they asked him and he went why would i be annoyed yeah. he was like i'm a millionaire i'm getting millions of views yeah. And he was like, I go on YouTube and I see someone else's video. And he was like, I watch it and I find it funny. And he was like, they do a different spin. I never even thought. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So then I do a video and I try and do something yeah. similar. So like he's getting ideas from smaller creators who are using course, that yeah. to generate more. We all help each other. Like so someone came into we all just try and want to make it. Came into my the other day I was playing a, a game that a, a content creator friend of mine had recommended to me. Um, and I just started doing a, a sub of the month thing. And he was like, oh, you're copying this guy with this. And I was like, yeah, we, we had a phone call earlier and he he helped me set it up. Like, we, he told me to do it. <laughs> yeah. He was like, this is a he good thing. He literally did it for me. <laughs> so I'm like... One of my favorite yes, things is it. I had a video. Yeah. <laughs> I had a video here, like 2.7 mil views of like, uh, it was a, a VR one and it was uh, Spider-Man in the wheelchair. Yeah. And he's like, Spider-Man, blah, blah, blah. Blew up really yeah. good. Juicy, a massive YouTuber. Saw the video and loved yeah. it got in contact i gave him the avatar to yeah. use he posted a video that equally blew up my comments section suddenly got loads of people going you're copying him i'm like why did it first i gave him the avatar i, like I was generally like i've literally like given this to him i did it first and the thing is i'm not saying like oh i did it first but i'm like how am i being abuse the thing is there's no argument with people you could go just check the dates on the thing yeah literally just look at the data when it's posted and you can clearly see who did this first but like again i look at it and go like but i don't even care that i did it first i just don't want abuse that's all i want i don't want recognition i don't want plays i just don't want the negativity yeah, <laughs> right i appreciate you man um Thank you, man.